It is a very, very hot Saturday over here in Thailand and I'm sitting outside my room at the guest house and I have my uh, box opening scissors and that can mean only one thing, an unboxing. hoping today to open up two packages actually. I didn't even know this one was coming in the mail today. I'm actually expecting a small item that I ordered on Lazada coming from Bangkok and it arrived in Mesot a couple of days ago and I guess Cary Express has been trying to deliver it here because it keeps saying it's out for delivery the next day out for delivery next day out for delivery and I guess they're having trouble I'm still uh, having difficulty understanding the address here because the address that my landlady gives me for the green guest house, the street address for this place matches the main street, like the big street running through the middle of Mesot. So it has a number and then the name of that street. So I don't logically understand how that number and name can direct anybody to here because I, don't, I have no idea what the name of this actual street is. But packages do make it here eventually, but it's always fun to follow the progress of these packages and the journeys they go through. And then you can see all the things that get uh, written on them. Anyway, the small package from, uh, that I ordered from Lazada, they just phoned me. My phone just rang inside and I answered it and it was Carrie, but the guy who called me couldn't speak English and I can't speak Thai. So we were trying to communicate on the phone which is hard enough in any language, and it's particularly challenging when you don't speak the other person's language. But I could hear him say, green guest house in a Thai accent. And then he said, uh, home, 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 home. You know, <laughs> instantly made me think of E.T., of course, you know, E.T., phone, home. And he wanted to know, like, am I at home? Can I, am I here to accept delivery of the package? So, of course, I'm saying, yes, yes, home, 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 I'm, I'm home, home. And, uh, and right after, the, after I did that, after I hung up the phone, there was a knock on my door and I opened the door and my landlord was standing here, but he wasn't holding my home home package. He was holding this one. And this one, as I said, I was not expecting today at all. I knew it was in Thailand. Um, it got stuck in Bangkok for a long, long time. I don't know what was happening to it in Bangkok, but it seemed to get stalled there. It came from the United States. It's from Armando, my friend there. And uh, Armando sent me the uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black and the Hero 3 Plus um, a while ago. And I talk a lot about the Hero 7 Black because I'm filming much of my life with it. I call that GoPro Armando. And Armando has been following my adventures here, especially, I guess, my technology adventures of late. And he contacted me and said he has something that I could use with my phone because I recently got a, or I recently was given a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which I use for um, editing video now all the time. And I've tested it for shooting video. And then Armando contacted me and said he had something that he doesn't use anymore and maybe I can use it with the phone. But he wouldn't, he didn't tell me what it was. So ever since then, I've been trying to figure out what it could possibly be. I honestly couldn't think of anything. And now that when I first saw this box, I was still mystified because I can't imagine why a box this large would be required for something to do with a phone, which is quite a small item. But then I did, I can see the uh, contents. So I have a, a vague idea of what is in here now. But it's also fun to look at all the labels that these um, boxes end up acquiring as it makes its journey around the world. You can sort of piece together the journey, which is kind of funny because there is a USPS customs declaration form here that Armando filled out by hand. And I noticed that there's another label here, a computer printout. So somebody transferred information from Armando's clearly handwritten form to into the computer and every piece of information was transferred incorrectly. So I don't know if that was done in the United States or here in Thailand for customs, 
but the value that Armando put on it, on his label, on the computer printout, they shifted the decimal point. So the declared customs value for entering Thailand is 10 times higher than what he said it was. So you can imagine how that can get you in trouble. If I mean, they move a decimal, yeah, I mean, that's a factor of 10, right? So if he puts down, you know, a value of $100 or $500, whatever it is, on the label, it would say $1,000 or $5,000. Yeah, jumps up by 10 if you move the decimal. And that's what they did. They made a mistake with the value. And I noticed they completely misspelled my name. Armando spelled it right. All of his labels are accurate, but the actual official customs form, <laughs> they got the value wrong and my name wrong. And um, the address is right. But again, I don't, this address seems to have trouble getting things here. And I noticed there's a, a, um, a handwritten map, like someone took a pen and hand drew a map of Mesot showing the location of this guest house. Because um, there's some clear landmarks near here. There's a river, there's a po big police station, and then Green Guest House is right behind the police station next to the river. And somebody hand drew a map on this box to show where to go. So I think the actual address means nothing. It just sort of means it's in Mesod, and after that, they have to figure out where Green Guest House is. Anyway, enough uh, babbling. Let's uh, open this box. Okay, how are we going to get into this? Like I said, I, I, I know now from looking at the label the type of item that's in here, but beyond that, it's still kind of a... Uh, Kind of a mystery. <laughs> That's interesting. It has um, wrapping paper, but uh, folded over so the wrapping is on the inside and the white is on the outside. keep getting distracted because every time I hear a, uh, a scooter or an engine from out there, I think it's a Carry Express uh, delivery vehicle of some kind. know what I'm doing today. I just got distracted by the, the other wrapping paper on the inside. Look at that. Disney, uh, Disney princesses, I guess. Wrapping paper. Okay, we're getting down to the basics here. Boy, this is like um, Fort Knox. How do I get into this? Can't figure it out. Guess all I can do is um, cut into it. Oh, pull tab to open. I guess I should learn to read instructions. There we are. Whoa. Bubble wrap. Remove the bubble wrap. Check that out. Ah, look at that. I know the name on this. Looks like a violin, doesn't it? But it's not a violin. It is a gimbal from um, Zayun. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a, I believe a Chinese company, Zayun, and they make gimbal stabilizers for cameras and for smartphones. So if your um, camera does not have stabilization, the footage isn't smooth, you know, when you're walking and it's bouncing around, you can put your camera on a handheld gimbal. 
a handheld stabilizer and um, that will smooth out the footage for you mechanically. It mechanically holds the phone or the camera in one place even as you're moving up and down. It's kind of like magic. To be honest, I don't really even understand how they work. But apparently this is a, um, a Zayun stabilizer. Whoa. I say that a lot, don't I? Whoa. Ah, handy uh, GoPro sticky mount. Carrying shoulder strap. An SD card adapter. So maybe there's a micro SD card in there. Oh. As with many of the things that has entered my life lately, not only have I never been close to one of these, I've never touched one before. So this is all brand new to me. Very interesting. So this is, I'm a little bit familiar with Zayun products, but they're not at, not at the uh, tip of my fingers here in terms of all the different models that they make. And this one apparently is the Zayun Smooth Q. And these stabilizers tend to be dedicated for certain types of electronics. Like one model might be for a certain type of phone or a certain type of uh, camera in terms of the mounting system and the balancing, the weight of the object, whether it's a smartphone or a camera. But yeah, look at that. It's a very precise and, and delicate kind of mechanism. Okay, for something like this, you'd need the manual. You really have to read this to figure out how to set it up. And it looks like this one is designed for smartphones in particular. Oh, <laughs> I was talking about the other product, the other package, and it seems to have just arrived. Oh, thank you. There it is. From uh, this one, I know exactly what it is. Oh, but there's a story to go with this one as well. Oh, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, look at. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's powered up. And since there's no, there's nothing mounted in it. It it it, it surely won't operate properly. But just for interest's sake, let's turn on the power and see what happens. How does one turn it on? Ah, that's nice. This is something GoPro, if you're out there listening, you see how they put a tripod mount in the bottom of it. Everything camera related should have this. So GoPro, take a lesson from Zayun. Put a tripod mount in the bottom of everything you make, just in case we need it. Like, how hard is it to do? Seriously. Okay. Ah, see that? I had to hold down the power button and then it powered on. And it is now like a living machine in my hand. You see how it's perfectly balanced? And if I move it from side to side, it's not working now because it's not balanced. You have to calibrate it. You put your phone or your camera in there and you calibrate it for the proper weight. And then as you move around, it will stay exactly label, level, label. It will stay exactly level like that, you know, as you move it around. Yeah, like that. And then as you go up and down as well. I don't know how it adjusts for up and down motion. I really don't. This I get. I mean, I understand that. But if you're vibrating up and down, how does it compensate for that? I don't understand the mechanics, to be honest. Wow. So whether this can only be used with a phone or you can also use it with a camera, that I don't know yet. So I have some, uh, I have some reading and some research ahead of me. Wow, eh, thank you very much, Armando. This is, uh, 
That is quite the piece of technology and quite the gift. And, uh, <laughs> there it goes, has a mind of its own. We better power it down, power it down. There, it's all powered down now. And it comes with this very cool um, violin uh, carrying case. So that is, uh, that is very handy. Hmm. I don't, yeah, like I said, I, I don't know anything about this at all. So I'm gonna have to do some uh, research. All right, thank you, Armando. As I said, this small package comes with a bit of a story and it could have a happy ending or a very bad ending. I'm not really sure which. In fact, there could be even be a medium ending. I'm so confused now about this product because I purchased it through Lazada. And as often happens on Lazada, it turns out that the seller listed the details incorrectly. Um, let's see if I can call it up real quickly just to tell you exactly what I mean. Um, basically what's happening is that when I shoot video on my GoPro or any other camera, I transfer the video files to my phone. And to do that, I use this USB 3.0 OTG cable, which, you know, plugs into the bottom of your phone into the USB-C port. And then I take the memory card and the memory card goes into a memory card reader like that. And then you plug the memory card reader into the cable. And then you transfer the files from the card to the phone. However, for me, it was going incredibly slowly and my file sizes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And after a day of shooting video, it could take as long as two or three hours, literally, to finish copying all the files from my two GoPros and my Panasonic camera to the phone because it physically takes that long to copy the files from the memory card to the phone's memory. And I was trying to think of a way to speed this up and one thing that occurred to me is that I think this is a 3.0 cable, but this is a very old memory card reader. So maybe this is a USB 2.0 memory card reader. So it's not taking advantage of 3.0 technology. Does that make sense? I have no idea. But anyway, I needed a new memory card reader anyway. So I went on to Lazada and I bought this one where is it? Yeah, it says it's delivered now. And what it is, is this. So that's what I ordered. And that is a Transcend RDC3 USB 3.2 card reader. Note, it says RDC3. USB 3.2 card reader. I thought, oh, okay, that's what I want. USB 3.0 or, or higher. And this one was quite unique because it has a space for an SD card, micro SD card, and USB A. So in theory, you can plug a memory card and a wireless dongle into your phone at the same time. So I should be able to copy files and continue to use my keyboard on this phone at the same time. And that would be a huge advantage. So this seemed like an ideal device for me. And I, I looked at all the pictures of it, it looked good. I looked online and there's some confusion online at the Transcend website about which product this was exactly, but you know, RDC3, that's what it says. So I ordered it, paid for it, but then later on, I happened to be going over the information again in more detail and I found this page with photographs of this item and very, very small print there. And then when you expand the print and it starts to describe this, what does it say? It says RDC2 USB 2.0. So the product listing is RDC3, USB 3. But when you look at the photographs, 
and expand down to the fine print at the bottom, suddenly it says RDC2, which is a USB 2.0 device. So I don't know what they sent me. Did they send me the RDC3 as it's listed? Or did they send me the RDC2 that is actually in the photographs? So that, uh, I don't know if that made any sense to anybody out there, but I don't know what's in the box. I don't know whether they sent me the right one or the wrong one. Boy, how do I get into this one? The weird thing is that both of them have an advantage though, because the uh, 3.0 one is faster and that's what I wanted. I wanted speed, but the 2.0 one is the one that has the USB-A port. The USB-3 version, it doesn't have a USB-A port. So each one has an advantage over the other. So I'm not really sure which one I want to be in here. But um, let's find out. Keep it facing away from me. And I'll hold it up to the camera. What did I get? Did I get the RDC2 or the RDC3? RDC3. Okay. So it's kind of funny. It could go one of two ways. Either the, the listing could be wrong or the pictures could be wrong. But it turns out the pictures are wrong and the listing was correct. So yeah, this is, what I, this is what I wanted. Yeah, I can feel I'm happier with this one because this is the modern RDC3, USB 3.2. So this is a high speed high-speed device. And you might notice that I've skipped a step. Sorry for all the techno babble. But on this one, this is just a cable, and then I take a memory card reader and I plug it into the cable, right? This one, it's all put together in one. It's the cable and the reader is one unit. So that should reduce any kind of, you know, conflict between the two. So I'm hoping for the, um, the fastest copying speeds possible with this device. Yeah, this is the one that I'm happy to get. I really wanted the speed. So, whew, I get to try this out and I get to uh, try out my uh, stabilizer, my uh, Zhiyun Smooth Q gimbal. Let's get that out of the container for so what we've got in the unboxing for today, a smartphone stabilizer, which is pretty amazing. And my own, my own little purchase, the uh, memory card reader. So I guess this will take up a good chunk of the rest of my day. And uh, I'll let you know in the next video how, this, uh, how all these uh, tech adventures turned out. See you then.